have an idea to sell on Etsy, or maybe you don't even have an idea, but you know you want to sell on Etsy, but have no means of actually manufacturing the product that you want to sell, or maybe you just need a product idea because you know you want to go into Etsy and you want to be in this e-commerce world, but you don't know what to sell. That's why in this video, we're going to be covering how you can either go ahead and land yourself a production partner so you can bring your ideas to life without actually having to sit there and make the product products. Or if you're the, on the other hand, if you're the person that doesn't even know what to sell, but they know they want to sell and you're more of the business component to that partnership where you can bring somebody else's already existing products to life. We're going to talk about how you can find that type of partnership or production partner as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. partner can be very tricky if you're not just doing a standard print on demand model or something like that it can be a little bit tricky to really find that other half or that person that's gonna solve that product problem for you but I have to say some of the biggest success stories that I've seen in all of my years of e-commerce is when the product guy joins forces with the business guy and they essentially grow a massive organization together bringing their opposite talents to the table to basically again grow the organization you're either the visionary that has the product idea or you're somebody that just needs something to sell and has the means to sell it how do we go about landing those partnerships by the way guys my name is Hannah Gardner if you're new to the channel I talk about building brands on Etsy and Shopify but a lot of other entrepreneurial stuff as well so if that is what you're into please go ahead and subscribe to the channel I'm super passionate about helping other entrepreneurs achieve their goals especially because when I was first starting out I mean, I was super lonely during this whole process. So if I can help you one step further along on your journey, then I feel like I've done my job. Personally, I've owned brands with both models of selling where basically I manufacture everything in-house and also brands where we manufacture with a production partner. So the actual product is getting made not in this office, but the designs are coming from this office. And that is something that Etsy allows you to do. You either need to manufacture and design everything yourself, or you are the designer and you have a production partner to produce your goods. Both models are completely legitimate and they have their own set of opportunities, but also difficulties of things that you have to overcome or deal with on both ends. It's really just understanding what you're getting into before you begin this world of online business and setting the proper expectations. I have more videos on my channel about setting proper expectations for these different types of models that you can check out that I can link above here. I'm gonna start with some of the easiest to the most difficult production partners that you can land that are super legitimate to help you grow your business. So the first production partner that's probably the most popular and the most easiest to onboard with and use is a company like Printify. If you don't want to know what a platform platform like Printify is, essentially all you do as the business owner is you supply the design and then they have hundreds of blanks or products that you can print that design on and Printify integrate directly with your Etsy store. So, and technically your Shopify store too. And so when you get an order, you don't actually have to pay for the product until it sells. So all of that is tracked and recorded inside of Etsy someone gives you money and places an order with you, then Printify is gonna charge you once you already collect the money and they're gonna print your design on any product that they offer, which is like shirts, coffee mugs, suitcases. They have so many things, hats, socks, stickers, everything. And they're gonna print that design for you and then they're going to ship it to your customer for you. This is like probably the most popular one that people talk about right now. It's called print on demand and it's also the easiest. I actually have a full tutorial if this is a model that you're interested in I can link this above and you can watch that full video on how you could literally start to finish set up your print on demand Etsy store today a really big pro to this type of model is like I said you don't actually have to pay for the product until it sells so you don't ever have inventory issues or cash flow issues per se because essentially you don't have to buy a bunch of inventory and go really negative then to go positive with that cash flow issue since you're not actually paying for the product until it sells you also have the opportunity to scale really horizontally so with this type of model 
like most models, but this one specifically, one of the keys to the success is you have to launch a lot of listings. So it's a very much a horizontal scale. And because all you're doing is supplying a design, you could sit there all day and push out designs until you get into the multiple of thousands of designs and products that they have the opportunity to be printed on. Con to this is that you're limited based off of what you can sell. You can only sell what's inside a Printify's catalog, which they do have hundreds of products, so that's really awesome. You really have to be in love with this model to really do well in this in this niche. You really have to be built, putting out the most unique designs and also a lot of designs consistently. Actually, this is a Printify hoodie that I made. But like I said, I have a way more in-depth video on how to go into any type of print-on-demand model in my channel, which I'll make sure that I link above. Now let's talk about a little bit more of a difficult way to land a production partner, but I've actually had a lot I've actually my first brand was based off the success of doing it in this way and what that actually is is finding local mom-and-pop shops that are already manufacturing goods but really have no concept on how to bring what they do to the online world if they aren't already trying to transition to the online world and they can't figure it out or maybe they have a few online clients but they haven't really capitalized on the full effect of what they can do with the manufacturing equipment that they own. So this is people like sewing manufacturers, local sewing seamstresses, this is embroidery manufacturers, even local printers, but maybe they have the opportunity to print more custom things or more unique things than outside of just what Printify can offer. This also can manifest into local jewelry manufacturers or people that sell jewelry that own engraving machines or maybe smaller company already own 3d printers they're just not utilizing what they can make and sell with those machines to the max potential obviously that there's no guarantee to this because it's all contingent on finding that right person but if you do put in the work and you tr at least try to find that person for yourself it can be a really, really beautiful relationship. And like I said, I've done this quite a few times in my business where I've aligned myself strategically with the right production partner, like local, like local, like down the street, I can go visit them if I wanted to and built a really, really great relationship like that. Some strategies that I've gone about finding these types of people is one through Instagram hashtags. So a lot of times they'll use the, the name of the city and then the product and then manufacture or city product wholesaler. Sometimes they use the word wholesaler, but they still are the manufacturer, even though they're using the word wholesale. And even if they're not technically local, you can still find overseas production partners or, or manufacturers this way. Another way you can do it is simply by doing a Google search followed by Google Maps. So seeing on your actual map where these people exist, if they do exist in your geographical area, or maybe you're not even limited to just your area because you could make a deal with a production partner where they could fulfill it for you where, from where they are, or they can make you the, the product and they can ship it to your office and then you disperse it as well. Like I said before guys, none of this is guaranteed, but if you're somebody that's really in need of some manufacturing help, this is a, a really good first line of action to at least attempt at trying to find that missing piece to your puzzle. Let's move on to the next way that you could potentially find some manufacturing help. So let's say that you really don't have an idea in mind and you really don't even know what you want to sell, but you know you want to sell. I wouldn't call myself an artist by any means, but I can get by on a creative side. But if I had to say if I'm more business or creative, I would say I'm like 40, 60, 60 business, 40 creative, which in a lot of cases, when someone's a creative, like a true, true artist, it's really more like 90, 10, where they're more artists than business. So in this case scenario, if you are that business guy, it could be really beneficial for you to find that product creative visionary guy. And you actually take what they're doing and systemize their processes and scale it for them with them still being the product visionary guy. And I've also seen this scenario play out really, really well. I like to think of it as like an architect and an engineer, like the architect is, you need the architect to make everything look good and pretty, but everything that looks good and pretty doesn't work unless you have an engineer. If you have a building, right, you can have a beautiful building, but from an engineering standpoint, if that building doesn't make sense, because when you turn on the light switch, the light doesn't work because the light socket is on the other side of the room, 
right? From an engineering standpoint, that, that doesn't work or doesn't sell. And so one way that you can go about doing this is by hitting up your local flea market. I've seen this in real life happen, and I have friends that now have a wildly successful business because of this interaction. The reason why a lot of people sell in flea markets is because these creators don't understand this online world. Some of them do. Don't get me wrong, some of them do, but a lot of them don't, but they have a good creative idea or they sell legit good products. They just have no idea how to bring it to life. And so you as the business guy could come in and look at their processes, fine tune their processes, help them outsource some of the work so it's an actual scalable process and bring that to the online world and then scale from there. Now, I've seen this with a lot of people that make handmade soaps, that make acrylic jewelry, that make unique wall decor and stuff like that. And one of the cons to this, or one of the issues that I see with this, is a lot of times those creators are so creative, think that they're the only ones that can create this thing and no one can do it better than them. That is probably true in some sense, but it really holds them back from scaling a legitimate business. So if you, as the business guy, enter that and say, hey, we can actually scale this, we can build an operation, we can build a system to make this said product at scale, and then I'm gonna go ahead and market it for you in the online world. Now, this is a legit way to find people. Like, you'd be surprised. Sometimes in flea markets, you walk by potentially viral products, but they just don't exist online yet. Finally, the last way that you could really land a production partner, which is something I've also done. I've actually done most of these, or at least attempted at them. Last way that we can go about finding this production partner is by hiring somebody to come in-house to work for you. So there's two types of scenarios that I wanna talk about is first, by putting out an Indeed ad. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard about Indeed. I mean, you can post things in Facebook groups and stuff like that, but the most success I've found with legitimate, qualified people submitting resumes is with Indeed.com. Basically put out a job post with very descriptive qualifications that they need. So if the qualification is that they have to make things with their hands, you wanna make sure that you're putting that in the job post. In this case scenario, you're not just hiring them just to give them free reign on making products for you. In this case scenario, you have a product idea in mind, you know that it's tangible for you to make it and maybe you have a prototype at this point, but you just don't wanna be the person sitting there all day making the thing because you need to be focused on the business side of things, which is scaling your business and getting more sales, doing photography, doing ads, so far and so forth. I've had a lot of success with Indeed. I've actually found quite a few employees through Indeed, local employees that have that's still work for me today and have worked out pretty great. Another platform that you could go to if you're looking for some design work where where maybe they don't actually have to physically be in your office, could be Fiverr.com. Fiverr has thousands of designers that you can hire, and it's not just limited to designers for like things like the print-on-demand model where they're making a design and they're printing it. You can find designers that make mock-ups of things that you can get 3D printed, mocks up of actual jewelry designs, and basically you can hire these people and bring them in-house on your team so they are actually a part of your team. And Fiverr is like similar to Airbnb where you can see They've been peer reviewed in the past. Obviously you don't wanna hire people that don't have experience or good reviews on their profile. And you can also set meetings with them and meet them to see if they're a good fit for your job. When it comes to business, the more creative that you get with achieving what you want, the better. Because if there is a will, there is a way. If you want to produce something or figure something out and crunch the numbers, you will figure it out. And I can just speak from experience because I can't even tell you how many things that I've tried by trial and error, either trying to do myself or through production partners or hiring people or just full on launching things that blew up in my face and failed. But that's all part of the entrepreneurial experience and you learn so many things by going through this, these processes and you won't know until you just get out there and start talking to people. Guys, I hope you got some serious value out of this video. Comment any other value you have down below if you have any other ideas or thoughts that you could add to this video. That just helps obviously support Support this community of people watching so yeah all right guys i will see you in the next video bye guys